Watch this video and let me know if you see anything wrong with my trigger press. If the answer was no, check out this video and we'll talk about how to execute the perfect trigger press. So as long range shooters, we like to understand our equipment to a very high degree. Uh, one of the key components that we like to understand is our trigger pull weight. So I'm going to go ahead and measure this rifle's trigger pull weight and then we'll talk about it a little bit. The way I'm going to do that is with this digital gauge right here. I have a Lyman digital gauge. There's other ones you can use as well. Uh, this is just the one I'm going to use right now. So on that particular press I have one pound 13 ounces. Right, and with that piece of information, I could obviously do that a couple more times to get a better sense of where my trigger uh, pull weight is at. Uh, I might fluctuate within a certain range, but I want to take that information and as I start to shoot in different positions, get an understanding for is that the appropriate weight for me given my application. So with a he heavy trigger weight, it's not really a big deal for me if I'm shooting in very stable positions like the prone. Uh, I'm very stable. It takes a lot to move my position, move my sights. However, if I'm shooting in more unstable positions, it takes a lot for me to gain stability and keep it. Maybe a crisp, lighter trigger press weight is something that I, I want to chase or I want to fine tune for myself. So think about your application. This really exposes itself when you get into alternative shooting positions, shooting off barricades in the standing, kneeling position. As we're in those unstable positions and we're manipulating the trigger, having a nice, clean, lightweight trigger press makes all the difference. What we like to see with precision rifle shooting is a 90 degree straight into the rear trigger press. So where I'm actually placing my hand on this trigger is right here, just favoring this side of the pad next to the crease, right there. And as I connect to the rifle and I'm getting ready to press the trigger, I'm holding the rifle in my shoulder and my finger connects to the trigger and I get a bend in that first crease and my fingers almost like a lever pressing straight to the rear so what that looks like is just kind of straight to the rear that bend in my finger and then it allows me to hold the rifle in my shoulder and then i'm just if there's any influence at all into the rifle it just comes straight back versus if i were to over grip the gun in a way i have a tendency as i'm pressing the trigger to possibly cause an angular influence into my sights that causes me to miss the shot All right so really pay attention to where you're connecting to that trigger as i said two missions of the shooting hand one is to hold the rifle in my shoulder two is to press that trigger straight into the rear All right and that's one of the reasons you see this good vertical grip this ergo grip on this rpr is that allows me to accomplish both of those missions i can hold that rifle in my shoulder and i can also position my hand in a way that allows me to press that trigger straight into the rear, right? Now you'll see the ergonomics on my, my wrist. It's pretty stress-free, and that's because I rolled my thumb over to the same side as all my other fingers. If I were to wrap it around, you can see that my wrist is a little bit more stressed. I have to work a little bit harder to get my finger to press that trigger straight into the rear versus just freeing those muscles up, rolling that thumb over to the side, and now I'm positioned much better to go ahead and press that trigger straight into the rear and then break a nice clean shot without influencing the sights. Now, if you don't have something that looks like this, let's talk about what a straight into the rear trigger press looks like for you. This is what it should look like with a setup like this. So with the swept stock, something like we see with our hunting style rifles, uh, it's not accommodating what we're trying to do exactly. So I don't have that good vertical grip here. Therefore, when I go to actually connect to the rifle and press it into my shoulder, you can see how my trigger finger kind of get, gets influenced a little bit by the angle of that stock. So now it's kind of angled down a little bit. So in order to properly connect that finger to that trigger, I have to cheat up a little bit. It's not a big deal. I just need to be more conscious of where I'm actually placing my hand, where I'm actually placing my, my trigger finger and understanding that there might be a little stress in my wrist due to the ergonomics of this particular setup. So a couple other things when we're looking at pressing the trigger straight into the rear, we don't want a running start and just jam on that trigger. We have sympathetic responses in our hand and we really wanna prevent moving the rifle during that process. 
So ensuring that we are in fact pressing that rifle in our shoulder and then connecting to that trigger and being very deliberate with our pressure straight into the rear as we're confirming a perfect sight picture until that shot breaks. Uh, this is something that we can refine in dry fire practice so we don't have to fire any rounds in order to do this. Simply set up on a target, make sure the gun is cleared out and then manipulate that trigger looking for any influence when we press that trigger out of our sights. And if we are in fact doing something during that process, figuring out what we have to do in order to position our hand and our finger to press that trigger straight into the rear. Right? This is something that we can definitely get better at at home uh, and that our time is well spent practicing.